Yeah, good evening, all of you, and a very warm welcome for this lecture. Uh, we are very pleased to invite Dr. Rajendra Barve over here. Uh, we all know him already. Actually, he is a renowned psychiatrist and very well known among all the Marathi speakers for his books and articles. Uh, we are very happy to have you here, sir. I would like to briefly introduce him for those who, who may be attending the lecture for the first time. Uh, Dr. Rajendra Barve trained as a consultant psychiatrist and he is a facilitator, coach and trainer by design. He is a student of Mumbai University who topped the MD and DPM examinations. He was at the Tuft University, Boston, USA as an observer. He has studied behavioral therapy at the Institute of Psychiatry in London. He later taught psychiatry in TN Medical College. He has been a consultant psychiatrist for more than 37 years in Mumbai and is also a visiting consultant psychiatrist at the IIT Bombay. Apart from psychology, he, he has a keen interest in philosophy and meditation practices as well. He has given few lectures on this topic even earlier at our institute. He has also been trained with the Sri Lankan monk Venerable Kolan Anand in Buddhist meditation practice and therefore his insights into the practical applications of mindfulness practice are invaluable for us. So we welcome you sir. Thank you, Thank you so much. I request our director Dr. Supriya Rai to welcome uh, the guests. Just check if they can hear. Hello. Hello. Just ask if they can hear. Hello. Yeah, they can hear. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Um, can take there? some more pictures. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, it gives me great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure. My only friend. is my pleasure reached. <laughs> It gives me great pleasure to be here with uh, with you, all of you who are interested in uh, this topic, uh, Gita and uh, emotional intelligence. I'm happy that uh, I'm invited here and it's wonderful to work with Supriya. We have worked a number of years and every time I meet her, it's something exciting that's happening in her life and my life and we have to exchange notes and look forward to something new. And I'm sure we'll continue to have some more associations and also work on some ancient texts so that we can uh, really uh, understand uh, all the ancient scriptures and texts in the light of modern, med modern psychology. And when I say modern psychology, it, may date back to what Freud started, but still goes back, in fact. And Indian tradition in psychology is more philosophical in nature than in psychological in nature. So if you start reading philosophy, you, you have to stop and make sure that you are reading philosophy or psychology. And particularly the text of Bhagavad Gita and Ashtavakra Gita particularly. And of course, Buddhist studies with which uh, I'm more familiar, Supriya. The philosophies are deeply rooted into how the mind works. It's only the mind that matters. And often people are asked question, what is mind 
and everyone says mind is not a matter and people from the field of matter physics if they are asked tell us what is matter then they say never mind we don't know what is matter also so actually nobody knows what is matter nobody knows what is mind so you have completely freedom to talk about mind and matter because everything seems to be in flux so why did i think of talking on emotional intelligence you know mr in this view why am i talking about emotional intelligence and bhagavad gita the context is very important the context of gita is very important and context of gita is very important for me as a person because my first experience of gita was as a very young child very young child when as a perhaps as a very mischievous child would not be put to sleep easily my father used to pick me up at a i lived in a very huge bungalow and we had a swing and my father used to put me on the swing we used to sit together and we used to read gita it the only shlok that i remember whatever he used to read he used to keep on reading i used to fall asleep It was the first shlok which is actually not from gita but written by vinoba it says gita hi mauli machi pizza me baal lena tha if i get emotional it's just because of the situation gita hi mauli machi pizza me baal lena tha padata radata thi it's going to be very very intense experience of being told about something which is so divine yet so close to heart so it's like my mother and when do i when when do i my mother pick me padata radata ghi whenever i am fall when i am moved by something when i am in sorrow she doesn't say anything she just picks me up she holds me very closely and that's enough for me so that experience of being held close to heart without words very gently by as good as my mother was my first experience and that is emotional experience as you must have experienced now and that led me for several years to wonder what is it that make makes me so emotional what does it really do to me what is gita what is gita text does to people what does it tell them then at very early age i read gita rahasya it's all bouncer but then i realized that the truth of the matter was there was a dialogue there was a connection between two human beings someone who is in distress and someone knows that you are in distress and i know if you are in distress i can talk to you i talk to you as a person as an individual and then i got into psychiatry in psychotherapy my main fold in which i work i wondered if gita can be called a spiritual therapy because the context is very clear person in distress person talks build a relationship and what transacts between this person and the so called knower is very therapeutic it is very gold directed it's not something which is you know sweet talk it's not something what we, what we get on whatsapp messages see it's very clear it's very focused it's very pithy it's very to the point and there are times number of times krishna addresses arjun in so many different ways you know parth kaunteya bharat all these are so endearing terms they just touch they must have touched arjun and then and also 
as I started growing, seeing whether it's a it's a it's a book of psychotherapy. Then I said, no, it can't be a group book of psychotherapy because there is no text here. Subtext is therapy. Subtext is therapy. The real therapy is in the relationship. The relationship which is built over a period of time, over so many stanzas, different kinds of appeals that Krishna makes, different ways he talks with us. So the subtext of therapy appealed to me. Because it's very scattered. It's a dialogue. There is some narration. But it's sitting and chatting and talking to someone. And you see wisdom in so many different ways. Basically, when Arjuna says that this is what is happening to me, Krishna very smartly says, you know what? We'll go right in the center. And Arjun says, this, take me to the center. But what is the center? He takes him right into the heart of the uh, Kurukshetra. And as a therapist, I said, oh God, he is flooding. this is flooding technique. You know? He just can't run away now. You know, this is it. Face it. This is the situation. This is where you are now. There is, there is no other place. Very, very here and now. You can't think of things which have happened in the past. See, what, what do you see here? What do you see here? And what are you going to do now? This comes very strongly. It just hits, it just hits me as a therapist. So the context is very, very psychological. It's almost stormy, almost escapist, not just dilemma, but almost deciding not to fight. And then you still fight. So all that happens is very goal directed. So when I see patients, you see, I'm not well, I'm not this, I'm that, blah, 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 blah. At the end of it, all that narration is say, okay, what do you want? What is the end result that you expect out of this dialogue that we are having? I would like you to go back. Don't come back to me again. You don't need me. I'll see to you that you don't need me because you'll be on your own now. So very cool reactive. Amazing. So Gandhiji had to say that whenever I don't feel good, I just open any page and I feel the bliss. And the word bliss is very important because he doesn't say it guides me. He doesn't say it's making me wise. But I feel blissful. Because he says it's all there within me. I need to find. And this sense that I need to find within myself, this is blissful. This is a blessing thing. And that blessing is what I think we all experience. So that is the context. And the context which I have chosen is emotional intelligence. And why emotional intelligence? Maybe in late 90s, Daniel Goldman published a book called Emotional Intelligence. And all the credit goes to him for putting it as emotional intelligence. Several people have already done. Wessler, who created the intelligence test, says that uh, there is something cognition, there is something that goes beyond cognition, and that is emotion. So for him, it was, yeah. So for, for him, it was not pure cognition, much deeper than cognition. So when the book came, some critics said, how can emotions be intelligent? It is a silly question. And I said, 
you know, Central Intelligence Bureau, they are not intelligent, they gather intelligence. So it's about intelligence about emotions. So can emotions be intelligent? We don't know, but we can intelligently understand emotions. Because for a very long time, emotions were always guarded as unknowable, unpredictable, enjoyable, or making one feel very sad, but still cannot be captured, cannot be measured. And psychology was grooming then and desperately wanted to do something which is measurable. Because we were guided by the people from the field of physics, measure. If it, if it cannot be measured, it does not exist. If it cannot be measured, it cannot, cannot, does not exist. So we said, no, we know it exists and we are going to measure it. So all the uh, tests came. And then a beautiful classification of uh, intelligence was the next to next. Yeah, next. Was made where Daniel Goldman described it to just these quadrants. The self and people, self and others. Perceiving emotions, knowing emotions, not just perceiving. Self-awareness, knowing where you are, what you are right now, this moment, what you were a few minutes back, few seconds back, what will be later. That is self-awareness. Understanding emotions, not self, but people. And the people from physics, they say it has to be measured. We say if you are aware, you'll be able to manage it. So that quadrant talks about managing emotions. Managing emotions doesn't sound very good. It sounds very diplomatic way of you know hiding emotions. So managing emotions can be said as regulating emotions, understanding emotions in a deeper level, and being able to handle it before they blow up. And using emotions to build a relationship, to understand. And if you want to understand this very well, there is a very old Hindi song. I'm going to sing it. But the old the song is really beautiful. This few lyrics I'll say, this must be in what, 1950s or 60s, early 60s, Salim Chaudhary's music. The male and the female singer, Talat Mahmood and Lata Mangeshwar. And these lyrics are like, Itna na mujhe se tu pyaar badha ki main ek badal aava. Itna na mujhe se tu pyaar badha ki main ek badal aava. And the girl says, I know what you are. Ki hai badal tu baavara, baavara, leke mein hu jal ki dhara. If you are a badal baavara, if you are beghar ho, aapka koi thikana hi hai hai. Itna na mujhe se to pyaar badha, ki mein ek badal aavara. So she knows very well. The lyricist knows that what is my true nature? My true nature is I am not at one place. I am aware of this. Do you know that I am I am a badala? Badala awara. Itna na mujhe se tu pyar bada. Don't get so much involved in me. So that will be too much for me as well as for you. And she says, yes, I know what you are. But you are that way, but that's why I love you. Because you don't understand how I am, what I am. My jalki dhara hu. Agar tu badal hai, tu my jalki dhara hu. I'm so close to you. So the song goes that way. One more session only on Hindi songs and emotional intelligence. I've got seven of them, not the new ones, the old ones, 50, 60. But they are, they are very intelligent, intelligently put ideas. So this goes very close to that song, Kalat Mahmood and Lata Mangshri. You listen to it again, going home. It's very true. 
So it summarizes what emotional intelligence is all about. Goldman, yeah, next. Goldman ultimately talks about in emotional intelligence about few things. And are all these issues covered in Bhagavad Gita? Fingers are crossed. I'm not sure because Krishna is not talking about emotional intelligence. He's not going to give any theory. He is not interested in text, but he's interested in making Arjun aware of himself. Emotional awareness, your state of mind. Arjun is also reasonably aware. He talks about also about self-control various times, many times. He's also very empathic. I understand what it is like for you. He has to solve a problem which is emotional in nature. There is a conflict in Arjuna's mind. There is a leadership. What is leadership ultimately? Leadership is guiding Arjuna to Swadharma. What are you? What is your Swadharma? Your Swadharma is the leadership. So on Sabkuch, everything I'm going to say to you is going to lead to that leadership, that knowing yourself, your true nature. Your true nature is that of being able to lead yourself and your own different thing. So we'll find traces of all this. It's not going to be, now we'll talk about this, now we'll talk about that. Even if you, there are, the, the shlokas are scattered everywhere, you know, from this uh, shloka to that shloka to, you know, so many places and not in a very coherent way. It's not like a textbook of psychology, mid-chapter analysis, later on we are going to read this, you know, it's not that. So when Arjuna faces that crowd, that people, his reaction is very beautifully described. And I hear this very often from people who come with severe anxiety and utter confusion. It's just not anxiety, it's utter confusion. These are typical symptoms of panic anxiety. Panic anxiety, which just suddenly, you know, hits you very badly and you just don't know what to do. It's like you feel as if the world is going to come to an end. And they do describe Siddhanti Mamagatrani Mukhamsa Parishishati. My mouth goes dry, my legs are frozen, Veputasya Sharide, I am trembling, Roma Harshashtigayati, with my goose bum on my body and I don't know. What is, what is happening to me? So he says all this and then finally says, Nache na shakechu ubha rahu manahe brahmale dasa. He describes it very well. He says, brahmati cha me manaha. The Sanskrit shloka is not there. Brahmati cha me manaha. The word brahmati is very important. It's not there. Brahmati cha me manaha. Brahmati is what? Brahmati is wandering mind. Wandering mind is a very, very peculiar experience of a person who is deeply anxious, one who cannot decide. So finally, when he says Brahmati cha me manaha, Ellen Langer, who is working on mindfulness, she has made a beautiful statement, two statements which are very relevant here about mindfulness. She says, wandering mind is unhappy mind. Wandering mind is unhappy mind. So you may wander in happiness, but the border of happiness is, I'm missing all this fun. I'm happy, but I wonder whether this happiness will remain with me or not. So that beautiful, pura jo sundar vastra hai, khushi ka, and that is the wandering mind. Second statement she makes is that if you are mindless, you are so mindless that you don't know you are mindless. Arjun has crossed that line because he says, Brahmati Chame Manaha, my mind is wandering. I am I know this is not good for me. 
and my mind is wandering. And then, like a shepherd, he brings the mind to the focus. So, how do I see this as a mindfulness and Siddhanti Mumagatrani Mukhamcha Parishushyati Brahmati Chame Manaha? How do I see as a physiologist, as a neurophysiologist? Daniel Goldman gave a beautiful word for it, term called it emotional hijack. What is emotional hijack? If you are not from the field of physiology or anatomy or from this field, uh, you can just focus on these two heads. And it is called stress. Stress creates emotional hijack. Why does it call, uh, cause emotional hijack? The emotions are like this Siddhanti Mamagatrani. And what happens in my Siddhanti Mamagatrani, Mukhamcha Parishishyate, Rebhutasya Shari Rebhani, Romo Nasheshya Jayate. All these sensations are going back to my brain. And where do they go? They go to that small red ship thing called amygdala. And from there, they are projected to the whole brain. And the amygdala says, boss, I am bombarded with these body sensations. Perhaps when you sit down for vipassana, this is what happens to us. We are bombarded with these emotions which hit the amygdala. And the amygdala is completely gone berserk, cannot do anything. And it's known as emotional hijack. This is clearly defined as Brahmati Chamaimana. My mind cannot work in the sense my thinking brain cannot work. <laughs> the amygdala is a limbic system, is part of the emotional brain. Emotional brain is a brain of a is a mammalian brain. That brain belongs to mammals. Mammals are very peculiar because they give rise to eggs or babies like them. They are not like the reptile reptiles. Right up to here is a reptile brain. Above that is the emotional brain, which is strong amygdala. And above that is the human brain that you see right behind your forehead, prefrontal cortex, PFC. And what does amygdala do? It just hijacks this. This is what Arjun describes. It has hijacked my mind. I cannot take a decision. What do I do now? What do I do now? I don't understand why. Because this amygdala is creating havoc in my mind. It's not that I can't understand, but this emotional state makes me unable to take a decision. <laughs> this is very beautifully described in the Vishad, in the very first uh, chapter. So what he describes, you know, I just jumbled up the slides. So when Arjuna goes there, and this is input, input going to the amygdala. What does he see? He says, I see what? I see grandparents. I see my uncles. I see children. I see grandchildren. I see teachers. Above all, I see father-in-laws, Shashura, my friends. All of them are, I see them, and that is causing that amygdala hijack, emotional hijack. Because they are too dear to me. Am I supposed to kill them? Who are they? And what am I going to gain out of this? Brahma Tichamimana. So, cut the long story short, we jump somewhere and again go back to emotional intelligence. This is the only way I can help you is to stop that emotional hijack by making your prajna sthita. Only way I can do is stop that emotional hijack. The amygdala should keep quiet now and let your prefrontal cortex take over. Think rationally, boss. Think logically. Ask yourself, why am I here? What has brought me here? 
and he introduces a term called Sita Pratri. And he says that Arjuna says, What is Sita Pratri? Tell me. Sita Pratri is a Sita Pratri is a Kabhasha, Samadhi is a Kishore. We can go on why it's called Keshav here, not Sri Krishna. Leave it aside. Sita Dehi Kim Prabhasheda Kim Asit Vajeta Kim. All these verbs have become very important. Kim Asit Kim Vajeta. What does he do? Kim Prabhasheda. How does he interact with the world? It's not just bhasha, it's a prabhasha interaction with wood. How is going to converse with people? If my mind is steady, do I become like a log of wood? Do I lose all the emotional content of my speech? So how do I converse? How do I ask it? How do I sit down? That means when I'm not doing anything, what am I thinking about? It's not when I'm conversing, when I'm sitting doing nothing. What am I thinking about? What does this Sita think about when he's not doing anything? How does he go about his life? So Kutai, again, you know, Ba's words are very pretty. Sthiravala samadhita sthita pradhyna kasa ase. How is he? Krishna sang kasa bole kasa rahe fire kasa. I mean, it conveys that, you know, sense of helplessness. Please tell me more. Please tell me more. And then this shlok, I think I will have to spend a lot of time. Because if you ask me mindfulness, ask me emotional intelligence, this one shlok is enough. Actually, one is enough. What is it? Matra sparshahatu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkhada Agama payina anityaha tan titikshasva bharata Shitoshna vishya sparsha sukha dukkhata ghaditi Kari sahanatu sare yeti zati anityate Only once he refers to word Anitya, if you go to Vipashina, Anitya is said million times. Shtabhaka sees it very often, but in Gita, he says Anitya. Because if you understand this, emotional intelligence talks about self awareness, but emotional intelligence doesn't talk about the nature of emotions, which is very important. The nature of understand the nature of emotions. Only Buddha perhaps talks about the nature of emotions, how they emerge, how they evolve. Then we'll talk about it. How they emerge, what is their true name? What is their true nature? And there he talks about Matra Sparshaha. Matra are the sense organs. And sparsha is the contact. Now this is, I'm not taking a Buddha class. I'm not taking a Buddha class. <laughs> Matra sparsha. The contact between the sensory organ and the, that means self and the outside world, they come together and it is not matra and sparsha. Matra sparsha become one single unit. When the sensory organs are in touch with the outside world, with the outside world, what are the sensory organs? The five sensory organs with their vishaya. The smell, the, the vision, the taste and everything. They come together and they stick together as if they stick together. They become one single unit. They get joined together. Then we are going to talk about this matra sparsha. What is this that joins them together? Because later on we'll get two important words. 
One is called Sakta and the other is Yukta. Now, Sakta is where there is bondage. There is bonding of Matras Parsha. They are bonded together. While Yukta is not bonded, but engaged in a meaningful way to understand the nature of Matras Parsha. And that, what, that is how he explains Shitoshna Sukha Dukkada. It's like when you touch a hot subject, you feel hot. When you touch a cold subject, so your fingers feel cold. But the cold and hot feeling stays so long as there is matra sparsha. So long as there is matra sparsha. If the sparsha is removed, disconnected, Yeti Zati Anitati. They come and go, they are not steady. They are not nitya, they are not eternal, they are not there forever. No, they are anitya because the contact is only impermanent. It is the anitya. And he likens Shitoshna with a Sukha Dukha. Because again, see the, it's a, it's a Sandhi, it's a one word. Shitoshna Sukha Dukha Daha. Sukha Dukha Daha de, Dene Wale. Sukha or Dukha Dene Wale. They give pleasure and pain. They make hot and cold. They give that sense. And this touch is not the Sukha Dukha. It's the starting point of Sukha and Dukha. When in bondage, they give rise to Sukha and the Dukha. Attraction and aversion. So they give. So they give rise to Sukha Dukha. And as Shitoshna is 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 Anitya, so is Sukha Dukha, which is emerging out of this Patra Sparsha. One shlokan says everything. And one more important thing. This is not mentioned here. And that is it's just not the five sensory organs. It is the mind which perceives it as a Sukha Dukha. Matra Sparsha is only sensory, physical. Sukha Dukha is an emotional, mental experience, the sixth sensory organ, very clearly. And he says, Agama Painaha, they come and go. And very often we see this as waves of the ocean. The waves come and go, come and go, come and go. Similarly, matra sparsha ne hone wala sukha dukh aata hai aur jata hai. So Arjuna is going to ask, what do I do now? If they are anitya, what is my role in this anitya tva, which is very important. He defines the role of anitya tva as tan titikshasva bharati. Titikshaswa is a very important, it's a titikshaswa and titikshaswa is like do it, better do it. It's not do it, better do it. It's made, it is wise to do it, it is wise to do it. Wisdom is there in titikshaswa. One single word and it is an order, he says it is better to tolerate it. It is an order, it doesn't say, Arjun, listen to me. And Titiksha, Titiksha Svabharata. Why, what is tolerance? Very important word. Tolerance is a very important word. Because I need to tolerate it. Why do I have to tolerate it? Because it is anitya. If you try to control it, it is not possible. You have to tolerate the anitya tva. 
you have to tolerate that it is not going to be permanent. It is an impermanent phenomena of life that you have to tolerate. However, you may want it to be permanent. It is not going to be permanent. So better be aware of this impermanence. Tan for Bharata. And for that, what you require is courage. What you require is courage. That I'm tolerating this and I need to be courageous. For that you require sthitadi. For that you require wisdom and that you require steady buddhi. Steady di, just not buddhi. Just not common sense, just a real sense of understanding the word di. And later on we are going to get all the derivatives of all this shloka. Second chapter, 14th verse. Not very popular. Karmani Vadikarasi is what everyone talks about. But Kahan, from where does it arise? Is this 14th look? Sadly, not much talked about, but I think it's a center. Everyone is going to say this is the center. This is the center. For me, for emotional, this is the center. So we go back to. Uh, with these studies and Paticha Samupada, and you see this Shalayatan Pascha Pasaya, Shalayatan Pachaya Pasa, Pasa Pachaya Vedana, Vedana Pachaya Tana, Tana Pachaya Upadana. Very beautifully described, stepwise manner, pardon my skill at of making the slides. He starts with Avijja. You know, that is where Arjun also starts. But we'll uh, uh, put aside uh, Sankhara, Vijnana, and Nama Rupa. Uh, we're going too much into it. But what is relevant is Shalayat and Chayapas. Shalayat the six organs, Pachya. You get in touch with the Sparsha. Matra Sparsha. Matra Sparsha is this. They give rise to Vedana. They give rise to that sense. That gives rise to Tanha. Tanha. That gives rise to greed. I want more, I want less. And that gives rise to upadana. That gives rise to attachment. That gives rise to being clinging to it. So we see, start seeing some parallels. Are there intended parallels or they are discovered parallels? Actually, I don't care, but this is how I see it. So these parallels are very beautiful. Because word to word they go similar. So how do I become Sita Prajna? Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Partha Manogatan Atmani Eva Atmana Tushtaha Sita Prajna Tada Uchate Kamana Antaratili Antaratina Sevo Soduni Jo Swaye Atnatachi Ase Tushta To Sita Pradya Bodhida. So we talked about Yukta and the Sakta. Yukta is one who is Atmas Yukta. A Yukta, one who is engaged with the self, engaged with the true nature of self. Now there may be uh, there may be different ways of understanding it. Right? In Vedanta, in Vedanta, it will be the Swa, is the consciousness, the supreme consciousness of the Brahman. But one who realizes and understands the Swa, the nature of Swa as being Brahman, the nature of Swa being the supreme consciousness, that is where he is still. Tushtaha. He is happily there. He has no more desire. His desires are fulfilled. He is completely with it. Prajahati, one who has dissolved all the kamana, all the greed that he has dissolved completely. And one who is completely focused on self, the supreme conscious. That becomes the Siddha Pradnya Tada Uchyati. That is what can be called as the Siddha Pradnya. One who has 
gone away from the sakta to the yukta state. Atmani eva atmana tushtaha. One who has truly understood the nature of swa becomes the sita pratni. Then more about it. Dukkheshu anudvidnamanaha sukheshu vigata spruha. Vitaraga bhayo krodaha stitadihi muni uchyate. This is almost the same. Dukkheshu nasi dukkhata udvega. Very beautiful this is. It's not only the dukkha, it's not only that I'm unhappy, I'm angry that I'm unhappy. See, this is how it goes on when you are when you are sakta. That I am, I, it's not only that I want it, I'm unhappy that I'm not getting it enough. I'm unhappy that I got it, but I may lose it any moment. I'm unhappy, I'm happy, but I'm not happy the amount of pleasure, happiness that I've got. So dukkha is just not dukkha, it's a complex of emotions, of udvega of anger, of dissatisfaction, being happy, the other side of the coin becomes Udvega. I'm happy, but I'm unhappy also because my happiness may not last, because I'm clinging to it. And that is the Matra Sparsha. That is the Anityatva that he has described. Sukheshi, Sukheshu Vigata Sruha. Sukh ki bhi lalasa Vigat gone, spruha ichha. Vitaraga bhaya krodaha. Again, he brings one more emotion. Raga bhaya krodaha. That affection, fear, anger. That is the sita vihi. One who understands them. No one, not one who has got read a great, but who can dissolve the bhaya krodaha. Dissolve the Bhayakrodha because he understands the anitya nature of the Matras Parsha. He understands. It's not that he doesn't become happy, he does become happy, but understands the nature of happiness as being anitya. So he is Sitadi. That is why he can be called as Sita Pradhyam. Because Sita Pradhyam also has a state of mind about which we'll talk a little later. Then we get a Sarvatrazo Anasatta Pare Vaita Lavata Na Ullasena Sintape Tachi Pradhyam Sthiravari. We can say here, yeah. Anabhisne haha tat tat prapya shudhashbam na abhinandanti na dveshti tasya pradhyam pratishthita. In the word is pratishthita. It's not just there, it's not just tishthita. It is Pratishtita. It is firmly enshrined there, firmly sitting on the crown. And this is what is called the Anasakta. He is free from the bondage of that Sukhada because it, is be, it can dissolve. It is not it is dissolvable. It is not just dissolvable, but I see dissolving. And the nature is dissolving itself. That is the true nature of swa, of the of the sukha dukkha or the matras parsha. Na ullase na santape tyachi pratyas So does it become like a log of wood? No, he understands the true nature of the emotions. Then he describes it in very beautiful ways. There are many. Can you get my back? There is a book there, so many more, more shlokas there. So how does he do it? So when Arjun asks many questions, I have omitted many. But this, I really like this because it describes it very beautifully. And it goes to that reptile brain, you know. Yada samhrete cha yam purmaha angani iva sarvashaha indriyani indriyate bhyaha tasya pradhyna pratishtita. Again, he gives a very beautiful example of a tortoise. The tortoise withdraws itself in the shell. The shell is a safe place to be. And when required, the feet can come out. 
when required. Otherwise, it can go in. Yeah, thank you. It can go in. Similarly, the indriya, that is the sense organs, the matra, sparshatla, matra, they can spring out and spring in, not permanently remain outside, not permanently operative, but they can be withdrawn. How can they be withdrawn? They can be withdrawn, but nature of them is like the kurma. The way the tortoise withdraws, the indriya can be withdrawn. That is how he explains. That is how he explains. These are his explanations about sthiti. Tasya prajna pratishtha. Because once they are withdrawn, the prajna, the head can be very stable. Then this is a very famous shlok, which again escalates, takes it to a different level. Because here again he describes what happens to a person who does not understand this. So it's a very beautiful flow chart. It's like a flow chart. Krodha dhodi sammohaha sammoha smriti vibramaha smriti bhnushat buddhinasho buddhinashat pranashati. And Vinoba says krodha tuni zade moha. Mohane smriti lopale, smriti lope, smriti lope buddhinasha, manje atmanasha chi. So, krodha dhoti. Now we have to go back to mantra structure, sukha dhukha, not understanding the true nature, and you get angry, you get unhappy, you get all these kind of emotions leading to the crowd, which can be one of the most powerful emotions of crowd. So very, why he says that? Because now you are in a battlefield and you are going to do an action which is so-called swadharma. It is not out of crowd. This is a little difficult to digest, but it is not out of crowd that you are killing. Because knowing this is an empowering experience for you. Sita Pradnyaka knowledge is going to be empowering. Whole Gita is a process of empowerment leading to leadership of a thing. So he says, Krodha Dhuti Sammoha. Sammoha is a beautiful word. Again, we go back to emotional hijack. Sammoha. Because Sammoha is Shastra. So what does it mean? It means I'm so confused. Because I, I become one track mind, you know, understand. In moha, the mind is one track. If I want this, I want this. Like the child, I want ice cream. I want, I want, I want one track. You show any other thing, no, I want ice cream. Just completely sammohit. So that story of Mohini in Amrit Mantha, she's truly called a Mohini. Can ensnare the asura and take away the Amrit Kalash. That is the moha. And we, many times we say, Man, me moha I got carried away by the moha. Moha for many times is seen as a very beautiful experience. Moha. But actually, here it is some moha getting engulfed in the moha. It's not just moha, it's just not getting attracted, nothing else, Samoha. Samoha Smriti Vibrama. When I'm so in, ensnared by that growth, my, my Smriti doesn't work. What is Smriti here? Smriti here is not memory. Smriti here is the knowledge. Smriti here is knowledge because knowledge is stored in the form of memory. And Smriti Vibramaha. And we just talked about COVID. I suffered from big fog, and now it is Smriti Vibramaha. Now I can say it was Smriti Vibramaha. It was, it is a Vibrama. It's like confusion. It's just not confusion, it's a Vibrama. 
मोर देन कंफ्यूजन बहुत ही ज्यादा से ज्यादा कंफ्यूजन विशेष करके भ्रमण इट इज नॉट जस्ट एन ऑर्डिनरी भ्रमण विभ्रम एंड इट इज मोस्ट दैट स्मृति भ्रंश दैट लॉस ऑफ मेमोरी इज सो मच दैट माई बुद्धि नाशो माई बुद्धि एंड दिस बुद्धि इज नॉट अब धी बुद्धि विच इज बेसिकली कॉमन सेंस बिकॉज दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द बेसिकली सेकेंड चैप्टर इज पार्ट ऑफ सांख्य तत्व सांख्य फिलोसफी इन सांख्य देर इज डिविजन ऑफ बुद्धि एंड धी धी बींग हायर सेंस एंड बुद्धि बींग कॉमन सेंस दैट वी आर यूजिंग सो बुद्धि ना सो माई कॉमन सेंस माई लॉजिक एवरीथिंग इज नॉट and then he says buddhi nashat pranashti what is your life left if you are not using your intellect if you are not using your common sense if you are not using sense logic your prefrontal cortex has gone for toss because of your emotional hijack and that emotional hijack has dis- disturbed everything and now later on when he talks about sama ध्यान धारणा टॉक्स अबाउट समाधि हाउ टू बिकम स्टेडी हाउ टू बिकम इन अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड फॉर सीत प्रज्ञा ही डज टॉक अबाउट दिस सेंस ऑफ हाउ वेन इमोशंस आर रेग्युलेटेड कंट्रोल्ड हाउ यूर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इंक्रीजेस हाउ यूर मेमरीज कम बैक हाउ यूर मेमरीज बिकम स्ट्रॉन्ग नाउ दिस इज अ मॉडर्न साइंस विच इज गिवन दिस टच नाउ Let me tell a little more about that. You remember the, that picture of the emotional hijack. That is, that amygdala is actually a very small part of the, very small part of the limbic cortex, emotional brain. Emotional brain has got many, many things. Amygdala is just a hub, just a receiving station and distributing station. There are other things also. Anterior cingulate it extends partly in prefrontal areas also where. imagination comes in pratibha spurti comes in inspiration comes in ability to recall emotions of all kinds everything is connected to those emotions comes from the hippocampus but all this man- manipulated by amygdala so amygdala hijack so when he talks about sthita dhiri he talks about sthita pratyam it's not just steady mind it's a concentrated mind mind which recalls things in the right way because your anterior cingulate gyrus is working now because you are not taken away by the emotions you are intact your medial frontal lobe is working everything is working now because this has been quieted and that is possible when in that dhyana dharana or that state which can also be called mindfulness this is where it works this is what the neurophysiology talks about this is what the functional mri talk about this is what happens in dhyana dharana this is what happens in meditation this is how mind becomes stable this is how brain becomes curious and not dull when he says buddhi nasho it's a dull mind mind which is not curious mind is not innovative this is what ellen lingen would have said this is this is not a bright mind this is stupid mind stupid you are like behaving like a stupid no common sense you have no curiosity all this comes into this simple shloka of prodha bhavati samoha samoha sthiti vidhana this is also very popular shloka इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड it is just not the matra sparsha which gives rise to shitoshna or sukha dukha it is the gathering of these experiences which becomes sangha which perhaps can be called sankhar habitual patterns of behavior is this sangha sangha word becomes very important 
because you may have gone through many things sukha dukha may have passed away but the residue of the sukha dukha still remains in your mind you may have touched something the hot feeling is gone but the displeasure that you experience remains as a residue in your mind it becomes part of your memory and you keep on gathering that becomes the sang so it describes very clearly that this is this is how it happens this is how the emotions arise these are the residues of the emotions and they gather together and from there upajayate from there are many things born sangat sanjayate kamah from that sangat sanjayate from this sankhara from these residual emotion that you have ha usne mere ko ek bar sataya tha that is the sang that is the sankhara that carry yo we had trouble you know and we in our indian we carry this sang sankhara from you no know, generations you know like right? मेरे बाप का इसने किया तो मैं इसका बदले इनहेरिटेड यू गॉट संघ विच इज इनहेरिटेड सो कामाज क्रोध दिस इज वॉट गिव्स राइस टू द संग वर्ड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अदरवाइज इट्स सेम संगा तुनी फुटे काम क्रोध काम संगा तुनी फुटे काम इच्छा फ्रॉम दट संग इच्छा कैन कम एंड संग वी कीप ऑन गिविंग राइस टू इच्छा इफ आई एम नॉट सेटिस्फाइड टू डेट टू मोरो आई डू इट that is the icha and that comes because there is a sang and the sang stays because you don't know the anitya nature of the matra sparsha and if you know that you will not be able to create that sukha dukha or if it happens understand the anitya tva and not create a sankhara or a sang we struggled very badly i, I was working with professor malar kulkarni we worked very hard and tried ultimately we got this word sang and we could say that this is how all this fits together so sangat sanjayate kamah kama krodah ajjayate ragadvesh yukte hetu vishayan urehe chara atmavesh vidhayatma prasad radhika ragadvesh pai jata ali hatat indriye स्वामित्वे विषयी सो नाउ इज मूविंग टुवर्ड्स बीइंग प्रसन्न सेइंग आई एम नॉट जस्ट डिस्क्राइबिंग हिम बट डिस्क्राइबिंग इन मेनी डिफरेंट वेज देर आर सम ब्यूटीफुल श्लोक इज डिस्क्राइब हाउ दिस दिस अविज्ञा और दिस इग्नोरेंस कवर्स द ज्ञान दिस नॉलेज देर आर ब्यूटिफुल श्लोक विच टॉक वुड यू नॉट written here on the slide but i really like it dhumena abriyate vadhi yatha adarshah malena cha yatha ulvena garbah idam avruttam he says what he says dhumena abriyate vadhi the way fire is covered by the fumes यथा आदर्शः मलेन च द वेद मिरर इज कवर्ड बाय डस्ट पार्टिकल्स एंड हाउ द गर्भ इज कवर्ड बाय द मिल्की कॉर्ड एंड द प्लासेंटा एंड इट इज हिडन दैट वे युअर ज्ञान दिस नॉलेज इज कवर्ड सो यू कैन डिस्कवर इट व्हाई यू कैन डिस्कवर इट बिकॉज यू कैन सी इट बिकॉज इट इज कवर्ड बाय समथिंग Line. I am finishing. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah. Then he describes this. The final. He describes the state of mind of the sita prati, which is not, which is not inert, which is not zero. Which is not vitaraga dveshe. Yo, no, there is something more to it. And what is more to it? He says, "Prasade sarva dukha nam hani rasyo pajayate prasanna chetaso jhashu budhi hi pariyati shite." Very beautifully. Prasanna te pude sarva dukhe jati saruniya prasanna te ne budhi chis srita shigra hote se. 
So what does he see? Prasad, it is state of mind. Now you know that you have been able to got out of this state of mind of confusion. Siddhanti mamagatrani brahmati che memanaha. You are out of it now. And now that you are out of it, what should be my state of mind? How should I experience the world? Should I be like uh, uh, an ordinary, like a wood that does not feel anything? He says, no, your state of mind should be have that state of tranquility. Because that tranquility is something which you helps you to protect. And this tranquility is also the knowledge. And the knowledge of the Matra Sparshaha Anitya doesn't make you sad, but it makes you prasanna. Very interesting. Because you're getting rid of those uh, demons of emotions, then what remains as a human being? What do you experience? You experience prasannata. Because now you have removed the, the fumes from the fire and you see the knowledge. You have cleaned the mirror. You see the baby now. The placenta is gone. The baby of jnana is gone. And now it is gone. This is the prasanna state. And how it works? He says, prasanna chetaso yashu. The word yashu becomes very important. Prasanna te chetaso hi ashu. Quickly. 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 It's not now that I've got rid of it. Now let me wait for the prasanna to, to descend on me. Then my life will be so beautiful. Oh God, please grant me that. When will it come? No. Prasanna chetaso yashu. Buddhi prasanna te ne buddhi chi shirata shigra hojase. Quickly. Once you see this through, your mind is thira. And not only thira, it's a prasadika mind. Yeah, there are many other things about, uh, he talks about uh, uh, in, in life one goes, it's life is like a boat. He talks about indriye vartata svaira kya maage the matras person keep on carrying you everywhere. And tat asya harati pradnyam vayuhu navam ivam ambasi. The way the, the boat is carried away by the blowing winds and loses all direction. Similarly, this matras person can take you anywhere. But when you know these are the indriyani, Charatam yata mana This is what the this is what the Indriya are doing to you. But once you like a kurma, you have withdrawn them, remove the dust particles, discovered the baby, you know, cleared everything, and you truly understand, then Nahid Nanina Sadrikam Yam Pavitra Vikate. There is nothing more sacred and there is nothing more prasanna, there is nothing more great than this knowledge. And this knowledge is going to empower you. Now you get going. Now you get going because you just won't get carried away by what my sweet words. Ultimately, what you have to do is he says, Hatova Prapsasi Swargam Jitova Bhokshase Mahim. Marjayaga, when you die, you will you know enjoy the swarga. If you live, you will enjoy the life on this earth. Tasmat Uttishta Kaunte here. Get up, be ready. Yudham Krita Nishchayaha. Get ready because you have to fight the fall. There is no escape from that. This is what the empowerment is all going to be. So, emotional intelligence doesn't talk about empowerment. If you read emotional intelligence, first chapter, he does talk about empowerment. He does talk about empowerment, but it's not the true emphasis in the story of emotional intelligence. But in Bhagavad Gita, as we understand through the iris, through the glasses of emotional intelligence, 
we get much more than emotional intelligence. Like all the factors which I said seem to be making sense. This is all that I would like to say. Thank you very much for your patience. I'm very happy that I could say this to you. I'm truly grateful to you for your patience and being with me. And I'm thankful to my very dear friend, Supriya, for inviting me and asking me to give this talk. You know, I'm psychiatrist, Pagalka doctor, Yahan. <laughs> I don't have many answers, but I can try to answer some questions. Yes, sir. So please state your name. My name is Yeah, please, sir. Can you explain a couple of examples? Uh-huh. How can you explain the concept of Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. This is, now, I've given the half story. The rest of the story is about Dhyanadharana. That is about how to do it. Now, how to do it, part of emotional intelligence comes through many stanzas which talk about to clear your mind, sit down and do meditation. Meditation is the key to move to Sita Prajna. That is the key with which you can work on. So, so all this is the theory of emotional intelligence. The practice of emotional intelligence essentially will come from the way you become self-aware. How do you become self-aware? Through the meditative practice. Meditative practice as Sparshan Krutva, Bahir Bahiyan, Chakshuchet, Antare Bhuvo, Prana Pana Samo Krutva, Nasa Bhantara Chayana. We describe prana pano samukrutva, touch everything, withdraw, prana pano samukrutva, breathe in, breathe out, nasa bhantar chandra. Just experience the way the breath comes in and breathe out. So that's a complete story of how to do that, which is not part of this story. You can just extend, we have already gone beyond. Yes, ma'am, please identify it. Yeah. That's a practical guide that will come maybe later. <laughs> but as a conceptual uh, clarity, this is what emotional. Yes, ma'am. I think you are there in my. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I was just wondering if you would like to use one of the emotions. Yes. Correct. Yes, yes. And when it comes to explaining that the company and father was at the top Absolutely. I, I do that very often and I tell them, look, they say, okay, I'm so well qualified, blah, 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 all that. I said, look, the greatest warrior in the world is in those kinds of Arjuna. And he talks about Siddhanti Mamagatrani Mukham Jabarishishya. So it, it can, it's a human experience. It's a human, and this is what I loved about it. It's a human experience. We don't raise it to that level. Yeah. So it's perfectly okay to give these examples. Sometimes there are ideas and doctors who are Yeah, yeah, I mean. And you are talking yourself. So you don't want to back, you have this backing of psychology. But other doctors are not quite. They, they, don't, they don't think psychology is important earlier, but now because they have emotional issues, they, they tend to come, but they, they are still not ready to buy certain things. And that point in time, when people are how to settle something which is beyond it. Okay, okay. This is another way of, because I'm just talking. We just talked about emotional intelligence. It's a basic infrastructure, I would say the basic structure on which various things are built. Like you say, surrendering becomes a bhakti yoga. It can be karma yoga by what you are actually doing, identifying your swadharma, and knowing the true nature of atma, the true nature of super con supreme consciousness, transcendence. So all these are possible. But see, understand when I read Gita, it's very scattered. To to make sense, we have to pick up, pick up and throw. It's like a, 
It's a beautiful vase, you know, all kinds of flowers are there. You can put rose and chrysanthemum all together. You can pick what you want and make it. So Lokmanya Tilak was complete. He says, I'm going to study everything, but I'm going to finally give you get up and tasmat utkishta kamute here. Get up and start fighting this, uh, the Britishers. So this is how he, you know, interpreted. But everyone in Shankaracharya interpreted in yet another way, more more Vedanta way, more Upanishadik way. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Very true, very true. This is all, in, in other words, this is all Sanskrit, this is all Greek and Latin to them. So when I, when I, when I talk to them, uh, I will not use all these words. I may give example, like I, I told her, like example of this. And then tell them that during, in fact, many times when people are in panic or in deeply anxious state, I said, I want to give you first state of anxiety. Just breathe with me. Just breathe with me. You know, take a long deep breath, exhale slowly, long deep breath. Let's do it for five minutes. I will do it, I'll do it with you. Let's do it together. Right? Let's do it together. And we do it for about five minutes. And after that, I say, now check. How are you feeling? So I'm feeling a little calm. I'm feeling a little calm. See, you are feeling calm just with few breaths. So what changed is your emotional experience. So emotional experience which you thought is, oh, I'm going to die and this is not that. It's going to change. And how is it going to change? This is the experience. Yeah, this is the experience. So don't call it dhyanadana, don't call it meditation. This is the first state of uh, anxiety. And they say, ah, kya kane? it is bleeding, you put something cotton on it, right? So it stops bleeding. Ah, then you feel good, yeah, then you feel nice, yeah, yeah. Similarly, just take a long deep breath, exhale slowly, long deep breath, exhale slowly, just do it, do it, do it. Then they come back and say, yeah, that was nice. Can I do it? I said, of course, <laughs> your breath, your nose, do anything you want. No GST. Yes, sir, Huh. So, it will not be always a negative expression, because sometimes the constructive expression also, like, Gandhiji Guna was not only an angry British. Yeah. British Guna's failure. Yeah. So, uh, the angry cannot be called as a negative expression, always. Similarly, other emotions also, you cannot call them as negative always. So, 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 if you, the idea in Gita is to understand the nature of the emotions. This is not labeling, there is no say that this is wrong. This is negative. These are emotions that emerge. And these emerging emotions are, is what we are trying to understand. And then they can be converted. But even he says, don't be angry, not with crodha you kill people. It's with clarity that you kill. Because in crodha, you don't know what you're doing. Gandhiji, after 22 years, came back here. It's not that he immediately started the war. No, he came. He must have given a thought number of times, number of years. Then finally he came and said, now it's time for me to work on that growth. Right? So the nature of emotions is to be understood as how they are generated and how they stick. Not just nature, how they stick around and how they create that sang and how that sang gives us to come and karma gives us to growth. So there is a beautiful way of seeing it's a flow chart. That makes it interesting. And you can really draw it. With clients also you can draw it. This is how it started. Now you feel this way. What else do you feel? What did you feel at night? What did you feel during day? So you can draw flow chart and you know, okay, this is how it flows. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, he's not. No, okay. There are two two things in this. 
in Gita, he's not a patient, he's a student. Yeah, he's a student. Uh, so student and teacher, at times, at times, my, my psychologist with me, we, we many times I say, look, you have two roles to play and I have two roles to play. One role is you are a patient, I'm a doctor. The other role is you are a student, I'm a teacher. And if you get into student role, you'll stop being a patient. So you choose, you want to be a patient, can remain a patient, I'll be a permanent doctor. But I would prefer to be a teacher. I would like you prefer to be a student. So let's sit and talk. So the change of role is something which we need to work with the client. And you know, usko sammohit karna hai. Usko bolna hai ki this is what is happening. Doctor, there is one question here. Okay, yeah, from there. I would ask a Varsha to please unmute myself and ask a question. Yes, Varsha. Ready? Yeah, I think really. Okay. Yeah. Emotions are more feminine, whereas the individual is in its own personal lives. So, how do you balance uh, the two? I didn't hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear this. No, but I, I can explain a few things. It's essentially uh, the the, emo the intensity of emotions and perhaps the variety of emotions and the changing color of emotions is more, is better pursued by women than men. Essentially because of the hormones which they carry. Because essentially the hormones which are there in women is to, to create that compassion, to create that bond between the newly born child and the mother. So the purpose of that, those emotions is entirely to do with the role, not being feminine or uh, masculine. And to say that intelligence is only with uh, men is, I mean, please don't, please don't, please don't say, don't look at me now. I didn't say it. Oh, oh no, I, I don't understand feminine and masculine emotions. I just understand emotions as emotions. Okay, I can't have a ma motherly emotion, but I can have a very fatherly emotion. Motherly emotion can't be like a fatherly emotion. So, uh, the, the emotions are emotions. Let's not label them anything and understand them rather than label them. Yes. Is it, is it not emotion society where many are supposed to be strong, we are not supposed to cry and all these things? This is the Zati Purshopat. <laughs> You are Marko Dardni Hota. Okay, but I think uh, uh, the, the, and the, understand the evolution of, if you can work on evolution of mind, it explains many things. Essentially, because in the uh, forager state, in which you're just gathering food, men have to go out because they had. They're, they're easy for them to move. That's why men have beard, which they can be, you know, seen from long distance. That a woman without a woman can be. Also better. So uh, whatever. So then, then I have poor, so I can't vouch for that. But but idea is that that is how they become stronger in terms of muscular. They become more. They have to really fight. They really had to fight, dig, fight animals, survive, blah, blah. And women had to stay most of the times at home because they didn't know how children are produced. They just kept on producing children. Later on, they realized that when men and women come together, they have children. So for, for a woman to be at home, to be the place which is stationary, and when you're stationary, you are more in touch with yourself. And when you are wandering outside, more in touch with what is happening now and survive. So this is how the masculine, feminine roles have evolved. It's a very interesting dictionary psychology is totally have contrary opinions of being great or 
Very good. I am just not yet trying to get the name right. Beautiful. Buddha was right. I think the name of the book is Buddha was right. It's about evolutionary psychology. Yes, please. Yes, Panda, could you ask a question? Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I'm attending online and I hope you can hear me. Yes, quite clearly. Uh, so this is my second session uh, with you. I loved it, uh, every bit of it. Uh, so my question uh, to you is that, uh, you know, different states of mind also call for a different kind of biochemistry that gets produced in the body. So can you just emphasize a little bit upon the biochemistry of a stitta pragnya person according to your understanding? Because uh, like, you know, there are also questions coming, you know, how to attain this state. And, uh, you know, because I think now the whole thing is how do you put it into practice? Okay, and okay. I being a counselor myself, you know, I just love the Bhagavad Gita because there's so much to take away. Yes. But if you can speak about the biochemistry part, because foods can create it, different kind of exercises can create it. I'll, I'll, explain, I'll, explain, it. Yeah, I'll explain. I'll explain. That would be nice. I'll explain. Yeah. It, is, it is not with the title. It is not with the title Stita Pradnya. Is mm -hmm. it a title with mindful person? Right, right. It's mindful Absolutely. person. And mindful person, they, they, they describe five neurotransmitters, neurohormones, serotonin, acetylcholine, norepinephrine, dopamine, and oxytocin. The five neurotransmitters which seem to predominate the mindful state or the sthita present state. Serotonin is all about quietude, sleep, lust, greed, love, sex. As telcoling is all about activities at the neuromuscular junction. Norepinephrine is all about excitement, fight fright response, which is subdued in mindful state. Uh, dopamine is feeling that good, and oxytocin is connecting and hugging. It's a hug hormone. So these are the five neurotransmitters which have been studied very well in mindful state. And I think if they carry on, if they give more funds, they will be able to study Sthita Pradnya state also. Amazing, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, I have one question. Yes. yes. Uh, so, uh, what you focused on was more on the Sthita Pradnya, which yeah. is part of the second chapter. Yes, yes. So, when we look at the Gita, that is, that is the A that we have. Yeah. So, how, from the emotional intelligence point of view, how will we look at the next chapters which are there? Uh, what type of emotional training within the next chapters are also? I think uh, the second chapter is not, not just emotional intelligence. The second chapter is more about Sankhya philosophy. Because later on, he talks about the personalities. Rajas, Rajas, Tamas, and Sattva Guna. So it describes more. And then in those personality types, what are the emotions? And he picks up threads later on. I think in the 15th or 16th chapter, he picks up the traits again. 14th chapter, he picks up the traits again and connects everything. So, uh, I would say this Sankhya Yoga or uh, the second chapter is a foundation, founding stone. And emotional is the earlier part. Then comes the Sankhya in that, in which he describes. The Sankhya the details come also much later. So, it's not that it's very uniform. We have tried to impose, uh, you know, different kinds on it. But actually, it's a flow. Actually, a flow. And sometimes uh, some uh, some stanzas which are quoted are from third chapter, from the fourth chapter. So uh, you can't have a text, you know. It's it's a story. It's a Gita. Yeah. Uh, there's so many things. Number one is here. You know, the
Thank you very much for that and thanks to all the uh, online as well as offline participants for their interaction and interesting questions. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.